I think this might be one of the most underrated weapons in Team Fortress 2, the Dragon's Fury. I almost never see Pyros using the Dragon's Fury, and until two weeks ago, I just assumed that the weapon was terrible, with the air blast penalty and the inconsistent projectile just making it unusable. Actually, after using it and getting better with the weapon over the past few weeks, I really truly think that you should try the Dragon's Fury out if you just never gave it a chance like me. It's actually not that bad for Pyros, and it's so fun to use. Now, I'm not saying you should pull out a Dragon Fury in your next Highlander match, yeah, but it's definitely way better than a lot of people think. As always, let's quickly go over some of the Dragon Fury's stats and mechanics, and how it compares to the Pyro's other flamethrowers. Now, there's a video by Zesty Jesus which goes into a lot more detail about the mechanics of the Dragon Fury, linked in the description, but let's do a super quick overview of the weapon. First, whoa, that is a long weapon stat list, but it looks way more detailed than it actually is. The main difference between the stock flamethrower and the Dragon's Fury is that the Dragon's Fury fires a fireball projectile instead of a standard flame. It does 25 base damage to non-burning enemies, and 75 base damage with each subsequent hit on a burning enemy. What this means is that as long as you hit a burning enemy with the center of the fireball, and it has to be the center, you'll deal 3 times as much damage on a hit with an ignited enemy than you would against an unignited enemy. As long as your fireball hits a burning enemy, you're going to benefit from a 50% faster firing speed, and you don't have to hit an enemy with the center of the fireball to get this attack speed bonus. You can hit burning enemies with the edge of the fireball and maintain that fast firing speed, but you're only going to do triple damage if you hit enemies with the center of that fireball. The Dragon's Fury has a much higher range than Pyro's other flamethrowers, and it certainly makes a difference in an actual fight, and this is one of the biggest benefits of using the Dragon's Fury. Hitting an enemy with a fireball will also apply 3 seconds of afterburn, and each subsequent hit will add 3 more seconds, up to a cap of 8 seconds I believe. Hitting an enemy with the center of the fireball will also apply knockback, like an air blast almost, so mastering this knockback mechanic is going to be critical to improving your consistency with this weapon. The big downside of the Dragon's Fury is that 50% slower air blast speed. The flamethrower can air blast every 0.75 seconds, whereas the Dragon's Fury has a massive 1.6 second cooldown. On top of that, you only have 8 air blasts with the Dragon's Fury, because it uses 5 ammo and you have 40 available, compared to the flamethrower's 10 available air blasts. The air blast also can be used while the weapon is repressurizing, meaning that you can't shoot a fireball and then air blast right after you fire. This delay and the overall slower air blast speed is the main reason why this weapon isn't considered great. However, you don't actually use air blasts that much in practice, and I'm going to show you why the Dragon's Fury is actually way better than many people think. Also, just as a quick note, the Dragon's Fury weirdly does less damage to non-burning enemies instead of extra damage to burning enemies. It's, it's weird, but this basically means that fireballs will do 75 base damage per shot against buildings, but will only do 25 per shot against non-burning enemies, as this thing shreds through engineers' buildings. If a fireball hits a wall or a surface, then it won't deal damage or linger like the normal flamethrower. And there's some really weird bugs where if certain projectiles hit the fireball, such as rockets or flares, the fireball won't do any damage. Now, I don't think I've ever encountered this bug like in an actual game, but it definitely exists and it's something to think about. Another weird note, you can actually get triple damage against enemy pyros with consecutive fireballs, but for some weird reason the snipers who use Darwin's Danger Shield are just immune to the triple damage effect. It's actually really annoying to deal with. Just something to keep in mind if you fight a Darwin sniper at that point blank range. Now I consider the Dragon Fury to be a completely different way of playing pyro. Usually, the pyro is a jack of all trades generalist class, but the Dragon's Fury flips all of that on its head and turns Pyro into a full-on offensive power class. It's common to play as a frontline brawler as a Dragon's Fury Pyro, instead of a supportive class that hangs around teammates who need a little bit more help such as medics and engineers. When you think of it like this, it's almost better to compare a Dragon's Fury Pyro to like a heavy who focuses on dealing huge close range damage in those fights. The Dragon's Fury pretty much reverses what Pyros are usually good and bad at. So for example, Pyros are normally really good at spy checking, good against soldiers and demo men, good against groups of enemies that you can light on fire and extinguish in teammates, and good at stuffing enemy ubers and pushes. But in comparison, a Dragon's Fury Pyro is usually amazingly bad at all of these things. So you become a single target burst damage machine. You can definitely fight against multiple unaware targets, it's just not really good to fight against several enemies who are very aware of you and focusing you down. With the normal stock flamethrower, pyros are pretty weak against scouts, engineers, NG buildings, and heavies. And pyros don't really have great burst damage with their flamethrowers, instead of relying on combos, such as shotguns and flare guns, for decent burst damage. The Dragon's Fury, in comparison, makes pyro amazing versus scouts, great versus engineers and NG nests, pretty good versus heavies, and gives pyros amazing upfront burst damage against single targets or unaware groups of enemies in a line or a corridor, for example. 
It's a totally new way of playing Pyro, and it's pretty effective if you get good at it, and definitely one of the most fun Pyro playstyles. I really recommend trying it out if you're just a little bit bored of the normal flamethrowers, or you just want to spice things up. Let's see how to play the Pyro with the Dragon's Fury versus some different classes, which secondary weapons to use, a couple of playstyles you can try out, and some combos you can use to improve the consistency of the Dragon's Fury. Pyros who use the Dragon's Fury will benefit from huge burst damage, but it's certainly a bit hard to hit consecutive fireballs. So as you need to constantly hit your Dragon's Fury fireballs to maximize your damage, it is useful to light an enemy on fire before engaging them. I got us a reverse combo style. Lead with your secondary weapon to light the enemy on fire at medium or long range, and then switch to your Dragon's Fury and focus on hitting your fireballs on massive damage. You can use a detonator with the Dragon's Fury and it's definitely a good option, but I think that the Scorcher is the absolute best secondary to use with the Dragon's Fury. I'd focus on these two secondaries and there's good reasons why I don't recommend using others. There's no reason to use a shotgun because all of your burst damage is concentrated in your primary weapon. Switching weapons makes you lose the Dragon's Fury's ramp up damage and faster fire rate, so why would you switch to your shotgun to do the same damage a ramped up fireball would do, but only slower? On top of that, you can't light enemies on fire from range with the shotgun, so you need to be quite confident in your Dragon's Fury aim to hit the initial fireball to apply that afterburn. The flare gun is a weaker option overall because it's harder to hit enemies with than the detonator or the scorch shot. Compared to the detonator which grants manually detonated AoE afterburn and the scorch shot which grants AoE afterburn and a knockup, the flare gun is comparatively weak and doesn't really offer that much for a Dragon's Fury pyro. And again, why bother switching to the flare gun when your Dragon's Fury fireball does almost the same damage as a crit, but way faster? The man melter, I mean, it's, it's fine, I guess. But if you need to extinguish a teammate, then you'll probably be doing it before or after big fights, or when the repressurization slow isn't really an immediate problem for you. It's definitely fine, and the extinguish mechanic can be useful here and there, and leading with a 90 damage crit is certainly strong, but the Scorch Shot for me is just way more consistent, it offers some mobility as well as a knockup. it's just a very, very strong weapon. We're not even going to talk about the Gas Passer, which is just atrocious overall, but the Thermal Thruster is a great secondary to try out, certainly not on the level of the Scorch Shot, but you can do some really cool flanks, and even escape from tough situations with the Jetpack. But, you know, for now let's just focus on the Scorch Shot. There's a Scorch Shot and Dragon's Fury combo that you can do to dramatically improve the consistency of your fireballs. Since the Scorch Shot knocks enemies up and pretty much stuns them, it makes the fireball way easier to hit. You can even knock enemies back into the second Scorch Shot explosion to mini crit them and then reapply a full strength after them. It's a really deadly combo and it definitely makes the Dragon's Fury a lot more impressive and a lot more consistent, which is the main downside to this weapon. So any methods to improve the consistency is absolutely vital. You can obliterate heavies with just a few fireball shots and it definitely takes this matchup from painful to winnable. If you can surprise the enemy heavy and land your fireballs, then you should be able to take them down. Heavies are very slow, so landing fireballs on them shouldn't be that hard. You just need to take into account the knockback caused by that fireball explosion. Apart from that, the Dragon's Fury is an amazing weapon to use against heavies, because you can burst them down quickly before they can react or finish you off with a deadly minigun at close range. Pyros usually get destroyed by scouts in 1 vs 1 matchups, but the Dragon's Fury gives you a fighting chance against good scouts, and it completely destroys newer scouts. You can burst an enemy scout in 2 fireballs, and it's super fast. It's actually amazing how quickly you can kill a scout who doesn't respect the damage of the Dragon's Fury. Now if you're having trouble against scouts with a normal flavor, definitely try out the Dragon's Fury and turn the tables on them. Fighting against enemy pyros can be a little bit of a skill matchup. Pyros can actually reflect Dragon's Fury fireballs, so if the enemy pyro is good, then it can be kind of a tough matchup. However, most Pyros won't try and reflect your fireballs, so you'll outdamage them and outrange them with the Dragon's Fury. You can destroy enemy Pyros pretty quickly, but you need to have good aim and be quite consistent with your fireballs, otherwise the enemy Pyro, with his more consistent and easier to use flame throw, will just take you down. The Dragon's Fury is definitely a high risk, high reward weapon, so missing a couple of fireballs can be absolutely devastating. But on the other hand, if you hit all of your fireballs, the weapon is amazing, and it destroys a lot of classes at close range, including enemy Pyros. Another benefit of the Dragon's Fury is that it completely annihilates engineers and their buildings. You can get the full triple damage and 50% increased fire speed when you hit an enemy building, so you can shred through sentries and also hit engineers who are hiding right behind them, since the fireball goes through multiple targets. Using the Dragon's Fury along with an Uber to break through an enemy engineer's nest is definitely a really strong tactic and it's even good against gunsling engineers and their mini sentries. Now since the Dragon's Fury is a medium range, high damage projectile that travels in a line, you can use it to totally lock down tight corridors and staircases. Check out this clip of me on King of the Hill Harvest, and I'm just completely controlling the enemy's staircase and the access to the balcony and the health and ammo packs. It's also easier to aim the fireball because the corridor is so tight the enemy can't actually move around that well. 
If you hang around these kind of tight areas with the Dragon's Fury, you can have a lot of success and get tons of frags. Now we've talked about some benefits, but I can't deny that there's some big downsides. The biggest downside is the air blast speed penalty, and the fact that you have to wait for your pressure tank to refill before firing or air blasting again. It's definitely a big downside, and one of the reasons why many players use the other flamethrowers, because you know how important I think the air blast is to fire up, and if you don't, then check out some of my other videos which go into a lot more detail about air blasting, mechanics, and why the air blast is so so important for pyros. Now the other problem is the inconsistency of the projectile. It can be kind of hard to figure out if you've actually hit an enemy with the center of the fireball for triple damage, or you've just hit him with the edge. On top of that, the projectile means that a Dragon's Fury Pyro sacrifices a lot of supportive potential, for example, spy checking or stuffing enemy ubers. In practice though, I rarely use the air blast when getting clips with the Dragon's Fury, since I wanted to be firing my high damage fireball as much as possible. But, you know, access to a mediocre air blast is still useful in some situations. You can reflect some spam, you can get some reflect kills, extinguish teammates who aren't in danger, or use it to push away enemies or stickies, for example. Now sure, you could be using a normal flamethrower, but you're not, so it's better to fully focus on offensive play instead of trying to be like a stopgap support fire. And this is the main reason I don't recommend the Man Melter or the Home Wrecker with the Dragon's Fury. Just use the Scorch Shot and the Power Jack. Maximize your damage and your close range power class potential. Or you may as well just switch back to the normal flamethrower. Leave your other teammates and other pyro players to fulfill that supportive role of spine checking and stuffing ubers, because when you're using the Dragon's Fury, you're giving up pyro's supportive benefits to become an offensive powerhouse. Now the Dragon's Fury is pretty unforgiving and it can be kind of frustrating for new players, but I really recommend trying it out though, it's so fun to use, and it's way better than people think, and even I thought it was garbage before I started using it. I'm going to keep using it after this video as well, it's really fun to use and it's surprisingly good. It just takes a little bit of time to get used to, and it requires some aim. I'm definitely going to be releasing an aim guide in the future, or a series of shorter aim guides, but for now, I'd recommend just lowering your sensitivity a bit, and perhaps playing with a stock shotgun and a stock flamethrower, just to practice your aim in the meantime. Then, once your aim is a little bit better, switch back over to the Dragon's Fury and Scorch Shot and have some fun. Now, is it worth using the Dragon's Fury over the degreaser or the stock flamethrower? In casual games or lower skill community servers, honestly, I think you can get away with it, it's actually pretty good. I think as long as you have another pyro on your team who's doing supportive things like spy checking or dealing with ubers and projectiles, I think you can get away with it and it's actually really good to use. In higher skill games or Highlander for example, I would say it's definitely inferior to the degreaser and the stock flamethrower because pyro is all about supporting teammates in those higher skill environments and those better players will typically punish your slower air blasts much much more. Now it's never going to be better than the degreaser or the stock flamethrower, but the Dragon Fury is definitely usable as long as you use these tips, combos and tricks to maximise your consistency. Really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please subscribe and get out there and start destroying enemies with a super underrated Dragon Fury.